Hi guys, in today's video we've got another assembly for you. This time we have got the shredder kit from Sustainable Design Studio. Let's get started. Okay, so if you watched my recent video, you will see that I assembled the Arbor injection machine from Sustainable Design Studio. They also make a shredder kit and that's what I'm going to be assembling today. This is slightly different from the, the standard shredder kit that they have on their website because I've gone for the larger XL version, which is a bigger unit. And so it's a slightly custom setup, but I've been told by Rory that at the Sustainable Design Studio that it should be fairly similar to set up. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Talk about pricing. There is on the website for the standard option, the sort of fully kit, version where you have to build the electronics and everything like that. That comes in at 2275 Great British Pounds. And then you have the partially built kit, which is like what I've gone for here, where the sort of electronics box is set up for you. And there's a few other bits that are put together for you. And that one comes in at 2675 Great British Pounds. This one, because it's a bigger kit and it's slightly custom, came to just over 3000 pounds. I'm going to be using this kit here to shred up failed prints so that they can be turned into nice small granules through this mesh and then thereafter processed in the injection molding machine that I showed you earlier and also do some more experiments with running recycled materials into back into filaments. So that's more topics for later videos but in this video we're just going to be getting this assembled. What we're going to need for this assembly is adjustable wrench spanner, metric allen keys, a rubber mallet, but I'm gonna use the end of this hex wrench. Circlet pliers, apparently, um, which I don't have any of those, so see how we get on without them. Right, so the first step we're gonna be doing is attaching the shaft to the motor here. So I'll just make a little bit of space. It says to lie the motor down flat, like so. Uh, this bit here, they've already put in for me and it's taped up, so I'm just gonna cut that open. We've then got this coupling here, which is a nice heavy thing. Then we've got a tapered bushing, which we have to assemble with the coupling, line those up. So we're gonna take one side of the coupling and use this here, a 1610 to 28 tapered bushing. Line that up with the holes like so. And it comes with some grub screws, which we're just gonna put in here, into the holes. So I'll just tighten them up by hand, and then we're gonna slide it down onto the shaft here. Just need enough room between this base and the coupling to be able to get this Allen key in and tighten up those grub screws. Okay, it's tightened on nicely there. Now we're gonna take the coupling from the other side, put the bushing in. This is a slightly different bushing, it's not a tapered one. Um, and that's gonna then attach to this shredder. So I've put that on, put the grub screws in loosely, just in case I need to hammer it back a bit more when we come to connect it in a minute. Then we've got to put this rubber starfish thing into one of the couplings and we're ready to move on to the next step, which is assembling the frame. So I'm just gonna push these out the way a little bit. We're gonna take the powder coated frame, whack it on the side. It does recommend that you assemble the shredder in its end location as even at the moment, the parts individually are really heavy. So when you put it all as a one final unit, it's gonna be exceptionally heavy but I've got to make this video, so I'm gonna to have to assemble it on this desk. So, first things first, we're gonna add some feet. So, if you rotate this over, you can see that the frame has already got some nice threads made into it, so we can just screw the feet in like so. Now these feet are designed to allow you to level up the frame in its end location. At the moment, I'm just gonna turn them all the way in. Okay, so that's the feet on. Now we're gonna take these pieces of plywood, two smaller pieces, and they've got countersunk holes on one side, so obviously they go facing inwards. They're gonna to come to the side opposite, the bit that's got the faceplate. 
and they're going to be screwed in with M5 by 20 little countersunk bolts. It's a good idea to feed these all in to their holes first and then tighten up afterwards otherwise it will make alignment pretty impossible. And then same again on the other side. Like so. So that's the two sides done. We then take the larger piece of ply, slide it down the middle in between. Okay, and that's the base ply we'd put on now as well. We're now going to take the back panel, which is this one, and put it onto the back, unsurprisingly. Uh, the says that the middle hole is slightly off center and you use that to basically work out which way around it goes. Got loads of these little M5 bolts, which is what we're going to use to put it in place. Okay, that's the back on. Now we're going to do the same with the side panels. It's one side, now the other side. Now we're going to put the plate on the top and it says the orientation is crucial. This little notch in the square needs to be at the back of the unit. So that's going to go on there like this. Shaping up quite nicely now. Right, so that's nearly all of the panels connected now. Uh, there's still one more which will go on the front here, but before we do that we've got to attach the motor and gearbox. It's going to go onto there to the 10 mil thick steel plate to support the weight. And then it's got holes in here in the bottom, uh, which align with holes on the frame itself. We've then got some M10 by 45 mil hex bolts, which we're gonna use to secure this. So washer on, push it up and under. Can't help thinking this would have been easier to do before I put the panel on there, but just following the instructions as they are. Right, so that's now bolted on. That was quite tricky to do. I'll help if you've got a socket set, otherwise that'll take ages. Next, we're gonna do very similar, but this time attaching the shredder onto the frame here as well. Okay, so now that's on in place. Take M8 bolts with a washer and use them to secure this onto the frame. That is now the shredder mounted to the frame. It's got one in each corner mounted nice and tightly. I did them the other way up than is shown in the video because some of the side bolts were blocking uh, where I needed to tighten up from. That's all good though. And the next bit is to sort out these couplings and join them all together in place. And we've basically got to get them so they're both level and there's a slight gap between the two couplings uh, and that, cu that gap is even all the way around the circumference. Making sure the gap is pretty even and then I will tighten up the grub screws. Okay, so that's that's all now bolted up so I can go ahead and put the final metal panel on. So that goes this way with the notch on the far outer side. The metal panel that I've just attached here is actually the wrong size. So in the custom build, it obviously didn't get adjusted this piece. So I will have to mention that to Rory and get this piece remade. <clears throat> it's just a little bit shorter, should be a bit longer. But you know, at least that proves it's custom. Okay, so we've now got the two coupling guard pieces. So we're gonna take the smaller side and put that on the back, which is the side facing the camera. So it looks like we're gonna do this by removing the bolts from the panel and then putting them back through this. And then we're gonna do the same again with the front piece in removing the bolts we put in the frame earlier. Sliding that in place so that it lips over the top of the other one and then into the frame again. This is made from one mil steel, which is then 
cut carefully so it can be bent, which is quite a nice, clever design. Then I'm gonna line these two holes up and use another button bolt to just join them together. Can't say that this bit is working particularly well. Don't know if it should have been threaded or something first, but this is not working well at all. Luckily, I do have a threading kit, but obviously you shouldn't have to do that. So I'm gonna take this side back off and then thread this underside. Right, so on we go with step 18. So we're gonna take this cover plate and add it to the side of the shredder module here. Okay, so that goes on there like that, nice and tight, nice and snug. We then take this one here and we're gonna put it on this, the gearbox side to protect the gearbox shaft. And we're doing that with these thicker bolts. Okay, so they're all in there nice and tightly. Quite like how this is shaping up now with the black and gray yellow color scheme. It's looking good. Now we are taking the electronics box and we're gonna mount that over here. Uh, it says that it might be separate. Again, I've ordered the ready-built version, so presumably that's why this was already mounted onto the electronics box. So all it will be for me is a case of just screwing this down onto here, nice and easy. Got the plug over there. Goes nice and tightly onto there, looking good. If the electronics box wasn't already mounted onto that bracket, then you'd have a couple steps just to uh, get some wires out and uh, then mount this electronics box to that bracket but that's all been done for me so ready to go on to the next step here we've got some pressure sensors which come out the side of the electronics box and we're just going to attach those to the shredder uh, top and bottom and the pressure sensors go in down here and up here and they're screwed in by these two m3 bolts into each one respectively what these do is just check that uh, the lid is on and that obviously the shredder is attached to the base and it's not managed to sh shake itself apart. So I suspect that's just a safety feature. Suggests using the holes in the gearbox to secure this wire neatly with cable ties. And you've got the potential for plastic shreds and shards flying around. Probably a good idea to have the cable nicely secure. Right, now we've got to connect up this electronics box to the motor. So we're gonna undo the screws, take the cover off. We've got these capacitors either side. They're padded, so we'll leave them padded, but just hang them down out the way for the minute. Then we're gonna take the cabling here from the wiring supply. I'm gonna push it down into the top, and screw it in. If there's bridging connectors in here that span between the two electrical points, they can be discarded and then you just have to go through and wire up the cables to the respective phase points on the gearbox. And that shows you how to do that on the Sustainable Studio Guide. Earth is always straightforward. It just goes to the mounting point at the top and is normally marked with the earth symbol. Then we've got brown top left, black top right, gray middle left, and blue middle right. The next step is to attach the lid or the hopper or whatever you might call it. Um, it has this clear Perspex panel in it. Mine was attached, but I've had to loosen it off and just pull off the uh, films that you can actually see into it. That faces the front, goes on like so. And then it's just a case of dropping the nuts down through and using the lock nuts to tighten them in. Okay, so that's that on there solidly now. And before I disappear completely from sight, we have the final step. Just taking the mesh filter. This is a five millimeter mesh filter, so it just ensures that anything dropping down is smaller than five millimeters on at least two sides anyway. One of these edges is slightly lower than the other, and the lower one is the one that goes to the front. So the mesh is threaded, so we can just use these bolts straight down into it with a washer on. This nut's not gonna go down while this pressure sensor's still in place. So I'm gonna have to switch that out for a minute. 
Right, so that's everything connected up. The last thing is just to take this drawer here and put it into place. That just collects the shredded material ready that you can take it out easily. So, what do I think of this machine? What's my first impressions? Well, like the other machine, the Arbor Injection Press from Sustainable Design Studio, it's really, really sturdy. It's very well made, it's very solid. There are parts that take a little bit of time to put together. This assembly, again, took me quite a lot longer than the sort of 10 minutes quoted, just because doing up bolts and things does take a long time. And the awkward nature of it doesn't always mean you can get a power tool in to do it quickly. Do I think this machine is gonna work very well? Yeah, I do think it will. And I'm very much looking forward to testing that out, which will be in some future videos. The only thing I'm a little bit disappointed about is in relation to this hopper. It's, the hopper does need to be on for it to be used, um, but the window, the sort of size that you can put into it is quite small, so it does mean you'll probably need to do some pre-processing on parts, chopping them up a little bit first before you can put it into that. I would have preferred a sort of um, open hopper, open top hopper, where parts could be just sort of chucked down into, and maybe at some point in the future I will do that and make one myself. The other thing I'd say about this machine is if you were hoping to use it for lots of different materials, which to be honest, I sort of was, sort of for example, going from PLA to PTG into ABS or, or nylon or whatever, and you wanted to try and get a really clean source of material, then this machine probably isn't the one because I think to clean out the blades or to access the blades for a start, you'd have to start taking off the hopper. Um, really want to take off the mesh filter down below as well. And if you had to spend 10 minutes every time you wanted to take them off and 10 minutes to put them back on again. It's a bit of a pain. It's certainly, certainly not quick and easy. So I think what, I, what you would have to do to get at least a reasonably clean source is to shred your material. Then when you switch to the next material, accept that the first X amount is, is going to be a little bit contaminated and just be aware of that before it eventually gets into more consistent, consistent waste. Anyway, Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, just a setup one, but we will start using these machines in the coming videos and I will get back to some more 3D printing content over the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.